politicians in that area of Connecticut? Oh, yes, there are a few. <laughs> yes. Are you happy with the politics and the politicians? Um, with my local government, yes. Some of the things that happen through the state government, no. Have you ever seen your elected officials, and if so, when? Yes, uh, I've seen my local, we have a first selectman. We don't have a mayor, it is a town, about 20,000. And uh, yes, I, I, I've seen my first selectman uh, around the town hall. Do you, know Just kind of, do you know people that have run for office personally at all? Um, yes. I have a, a girlfriend that has run and uh, gotten on the uh, board of zoning, the zoning board in town. Does she, does she like being in politics? Yes, I think she enjoys it. Mm -hmm. Has she changed at all since she uh, got into politics? No. <laughs> no, it's not a full-time job. This is a, it's a, it's a job. It's a freebie. She doesn't get paid for it. Is that something you might ever think of doing? Um. I myself, no, not running. Um, I think after I were retired, I'd be more active, but maybe more in the terms of uh, maybe a League of Women Vote or something like that. Do you think you need to have a certain kind of uh, personality to go into politics? I think you have to care about what's going on. You said that you're more satisfied with local politics than state politics. How come? Uh, we have a problem in town in that. Um, we just recently got a new jail in our town, and we found that our state, while various groups from the, well, the correctional board, the board of corrections, all right, um, I believe they lied to the citizens of Newtown a lot, and that's very upsetting when you find out that you're being lied to over and over and over again. We are lied to about the size of the jail correctional facility and um, the type of people that were going to be incarcerated there and uh, about the effects of the environment but that came from the state uh, we tried to fight I would say City Hall but State Hall and we lost and uh, you always think that you can fight and win and, but we did not win so long. Appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thanks very much. Okay. Where are you from and what are politics like down there? Well, we're from Dallas, Texas, and we think probably it's, uh, I'd say, 60 40 Republican and Democrat, conservative and liberal. Do you have any, pol do you have any politicians down there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid so. <laughs> what are they like? <laughs> Who you knows? Mean, as far as honesty, or <laughs> wow. You can take it from there. I would say you got both kinds. Okay. Yeah. We've got some very hardworking politicians, and then uh, we've got some we'd love to get rid of. <laughs> when do you see your politicians? At well, election time. At election time mainly. And we just had an election there for the Democratic uh, senatorial race that's fulfilled one that uh, was vacant. And uh, you had one very liberal uh, politician against a more conservative businessman type politician. And uh, in this case, the businessman won, but not for a great deal. Which, uh, basically, that's it. Do you think it's important to know the people that are in office personally? Well, I think the you know something about the in Dallas area. Unless you work on their campaign, and then you're only going to see one side of them, so. Well, I think it's good if you can know something about their morals and their ethics, because if, uh, if they're not honest in business, they're not going to be honest in politics. We count indictments. <laughs> <laughs> what do people get indicted for down there recently? <laughs> well, you don't have much uh, rustling anymore or horse stealing or... <laughs> That type of thing, but uh, I'd say uh, about the same thing you'd get arrested for here. We have drive-by shootings, and we've had several of those lately. Not and, by and, and the gangs, not for the politicians. But. What are the politicians up to down there, though? Well, uh, 
let's see, the governor was accused of uh, using uh, her funds for campaign uh, things, and so was the senator. A newly elected senator. Uh, the fellow that of Jim Mattox, he has been indicted before, but nothing came of that. Uh, and, he's still uh, running. <laughs> yeah, still running. Um, so um, that's the kind of thing that. <laughs> Do y'all ever get embarrassed by that kind of behavior? Of course. Of course. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you think people think of Texas as a place where that kind of stuff is allowed to go on? Not any more so than any other part of the United States. Well, I think it's, it, it's everywhere. It has gotten a bad name from time to time, like when the Kennedy assassination. But we, uh, he wasn't a local citizen <laughs> that killed him, I understand. So. <laughs> well, we, you know, some places do have reputations for having more colorful politics or more corrupt politics than other places. If, We've been to Washington, obviously. Where else would you, you know, we're doing this stuff about politics. Where else would you send us to find good, good call for politics in America? Austin. Austin? <laughs> Austin, Texas. What goes on there? What goes well, on? that's the capital. That's the state capital. But, uh, and what would we find if we went, went to Austin? Well, it's a very pretty town, but uh, it has It's a beautiful town. People it has who move a, there don't want to leave. It has it's, uh, a lot streaming. of lawyers that uh, try to pretty well run the uh, it's, local it's senators. It's very liberal. It's liberal. Very liberal. And then the University of Texas is there, and you have a student, quite a student, uh, rising to mm -hmm. from uh, time to time. What about the legislature? Well, they are, like I said, I think they're they are really uh, you, you, uh, controlled a lot by the local lawyers. There. Whatever they uh, push for, they usually get. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've heard some fairly colorful stories about some of the local uh, yeah. the legislators. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. You were the ma'am, you were going to say something? Did you have anything to say no, about that? No. <laughs> I was trying to think of the saying that they had, that someone said one time about the, the, uh, the Lord doesn't. Uh, allow the legislature to be in session same, something about the same time the uh, what, what was that? I can't, I can't I remember, remember it, I'm that. sorry. I don't know that. Was, we'll ask next time we go down there. We'll, <laughs> <laughs> well you're, you governor? you're welcome to come down. I think she is one of the worst things that's happened to the state of Texas. Uh, we just do not have um, well now we have gambling and I, I consider her the problem with that. She, she pushed uh, for the lottery she, and so forth. Um, it was supposed to go to educate our people and none of it has gone to the education. So. All of it goes into the general fund, general which fund is what she the, said it would do, uh, but now they need more money, more money, more money. And so the, that's certainly the only she, thing that's done she is is really, away from the business. She's now. really a professional politician and she's good at it. And I think you may hear her in some federal position later on either as senator or vice president or something like that because she really knows how to, she to knows talk, how to politics, to talk but, and politic um, and to really say the right things to the right people. <laughs> Do you think that's important in a politician? I mean, to say well, the right it, things? Well, to, know, to know how to get, is it, is what it makes a good politician? Done? Well, <laughs> they have to be articulate. They have to be good at, at uh, uh, speaking and have a good personality, I think. And, uh, because of television. But that's what you're going yep, to hear. That's what you're going to hear. That's what you're going but to hear. But they got to be believable too. And what if they if they not only say but if they do what they say. What what I was saying, you've got politicians and, and I hate to say this, but I think our president is that way. He will go and talk to people in one part of the country and he'll tell them what they want to hear. But he may say the opposite thing when he goes and talks to people in another part of the country. And that is where trust or honesty or ethics gets into the situation and you don't always have it not only him but other politicians and a lot of our senators and congressmen are that way too now you obviously think a lot about politics and you follow the issues did you all ever think about getting involved in, in political service did no you? way we don't have no time. way <laughs> <laughs> we both we always vote because i'm retired and i would not even consider it at this age when run for city council or
You know, we have a good city government. I'm proud of our city government. We, it's a lively city government, but um, I think uh, compared to what some of the other cities of our size go through, I think we have a very honest city government. So. Can you do us a favor, just uh, say your name and address and we'll let you know when this comes out. Well, okay. we appreciate it. I'm Eldon Brain, and this is my wife, Mary Ann, and we're at 920 Cordova, and that's spelled C-O-R-D-O-V-A, and that's in Dallas, Texas, 75223. That's great. 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 All right. <laughs> we're going to be taping a lot of stuff, but we're going to cut it up, so yeah. make a mistake. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay, Don't we'll worry never see it or know it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you know. We'll let you know. Okay. Where about are you guys from? Dayton, Ohio. Did you say we're from? Dayton? We're yeah. from Dayton, Ohio. Are there any politicians there? There's yeah. a few. Yeah. <laughs> what are they like? Just like politicians are the world over. <laughs> what's that? What's that? What's that? Um, I don't know. What's the box there? Which one? Well, I, uh, I don't get in contact with them very much anymore, <laughs> yeah. but uh, they can certainly hold their own. Um, we're not much into politics. Do you ever see your elected officials at all? Uh, no. Personally, no. No. Never at all? No. Do you think it's important for people to see Yes, I think, oh, yeah, I think so. Have you ever known anybody that ran for office at all, ever? Yes, I knew the governor of Kentucky, John Y. Brown. Really? Yeah. She was I, well, I'm from Lexington, Kentucky originally. That's where I was born. But he was a friend of ours, my brother. Is politics in Kentucky different than politics in Very. <laughs> What's it like? Well, they're typical politics there. I don't want to say. <laughs> Kentucky politics. Uh, we're different. originally from Louisiana. You know, the politics are pretty crazy down there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it's pretty crazy in Kentucky, too. <laughs> I mean, in what way? I mean, how, you know, we're going to be down and filming, so you might as well tell us. <laughs> oh, in that area? Yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they just politics, they, they run everything, you know. I mean, it's not the most honest state in the world. Not that you can say that. <laughs> I don't think you're saying anything that isn't well known. <laughs> no. no. I think it's pretty general. <laughs> politics. Oh, really. John White didn't see that. Because you always got the truth on one side and the sound scene on the other. Why do you think that is? I mean, everybody gets to vote, and, and a lot of people feel that way, so why I just. They... I just think the average person doesn't get to uh, really know what's going on in government unless you're really dedicated to it and investigate right. it. And then, and then sometimes, unless you're in it, you still don't really know what's going on. Do you, so. think, do you think it takes a certain kind of personality to, to, to go into politics? Very much so. Yes, sir, I think so. What kind and I think a good person that goes into con uh, the trouble is we want to get good people in politics, but when we get them in there, I don't think they can stay good and do anything. To uh, stay good, you're not going to last That's in politics. Right. That's the problem. So, and we're a little bit out of politics right now, anyway, because we're we are not Clinton people, <laughs> and so I'm very disenchanted. The abortion with, issue is a big issue with us. With, very big with us, uh, family and so forth. Life. But, I mean, we're very, very much. A, will you only vote for a candidate? Will you? Would you say that that's the most important issue and that would just define whether or not you'd vote for Kennedy? Oh, yeah. I, was, I certainly I, would. I was a Democrat all my life. And uh, when Clinton came in, no way I'd vote for him. For the simple reason of the abortion Pro issue. Life. Some of the other things that he's voting for. Well, I just don't like Clinton, period, or anything that he's, well, anything that he's for. What about, I mean, you all are having some local elections in Ohio coming up, the senator and governor. Yeah. Is it, would you apply the same kind of yes. issue test yes. to those people? Oh, certainly. Yeah. yeah. That's the biggest issue out there today. I mean, you kill the onboard, I think the whole country goes to uh, pieces. I already <laughs> mean it, over the long haul. That's what's wrong with the family. That's why everybody is shooting each other the on all these here. streets. I mean, Dayton's very, very high in crime, and uh, there's a lot of killings Every day, I think it's 29 killings since January. And you think a politician can make a difference about things like that? Certainly can, especially in life. When you start fooling around with life, you're fooling around well, with Clinton the good Well, Clinton can. Lord, We've know. seen that already with Bush. I mean, we weren't real Republican people to begin with, but he at least talked life. I don't know that he was yeah, really for I mean, that's life, what we voted but he for. talked life, and so did Reagan. But um, Clinton's very obviously not. 
so I just I'm not that. And people that say that's not a that's just one issue is to me is just not one issue. <laughs> if you're not for life, you're not. I, mean, I think that's the way everything's going to go. I think that's a big issue, one of the biggest issues. Who's the best politician? Move a little bit closer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's always pushing me away. <laughs> who's, the, who's the best politician you've ever seen in your lifetime? Uh, I don't know many. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know many either. I mean, her father is pretty well implicated in the politics in Kentucky, but I, I wasn't. No, no, no. I, I don't know. I couldn't really say offhand. You think John Wy was a good politician? No. <laughs> John Wy, look. Gosh, this goes into Kentucky. I'm in trouble. <laughs> was your father? Was your father a politician? He was very much in and active in politics. He wasn't a politician, but he was knew a lot of in the political. He's part of the good old gang, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I just <laughs> keep on that <laughs> One thing you said before was that uh, you didn't think that it's possible to kind of be an effective politician without maybe doing some things that might That's not sad, be. That's sad, but I yeah. believe that. I think that's. It, I think it's. I think it's still true. Oh, I, do I think that's why if you get a good man in in, po in, uh, in a position to do something, he can't do it because he can't. If he's going to really stay, he's got to play the play the game. And when you play the game, you don't. You know, that's the way I feel. You don't so. play the game, so it's sort of impossible now. That's, that's right. right. An honest politician. Yeah. I just don't think there's many, too many. And if you are, you're not in it long. Right. <laughs> can we ask you to introduce yourself on camera just so we can we can tell you about what this yeah, we'll, what your we'll names are? Okay. okay. My name is Jean Weaver. Lucky Weaver. And and we're, address? we're from uh, Centerville, Centerville, Ohio, Ohio which, is which is a suburb of Dayton. Ohio. South of Dayton. Ohio. If you get if you have a street address, we'll let you know. Okay. okay. It's yeah. 346 Cedar Leaf Court, Centerville, Ohio. What's your zip? 45459. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's called bites, huh? That's right. <laughs> Where are you folks from? Charlotte, North Carolina. So you can say we're from Charlotte. We're from Charlotte, North Carolina. Are there any politicians down there? Uh, we have a city full of politicians. <laughs> what are politicians like down in Charlotte? Well, we have a lot of local issues that uh, are, are interesting to the public. The uh, uh, active Republican and Democratic parties uh, in Charlotte. We have currently now have an open uh, uh, congressional seat that uh, the Democratic and Republican parties are uh, pursuing vigorously. Our current congressman is uh, retiring at the end of his term. So does that mean the politics is really colorful and interesting down there now? Oh yes, there's a lot of local interest in uh, 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 local and national elections in the Charlotte area. Charlotte's a very exciting city and uh, politics is part of it. Just had the president visit three different times. Once for the uh, uh, let's see, car. The final four uh, was in Charlotte, and President Clinton was there. The uh, Mustang, the Mustang convention. He came back for that, and he was there twice for the final four. He'll run for Congress if he comes in there. <laughs> well, he's had one of the, uh, some of his town meetings in the Charlotte area. Uh, so he's uh, been in the neighborhood a number of times. Well, obviously you see President Clinton all the time. How often do you see your elected officials? Personally or on the television? We see him on television regularly. We see him on the uh, PBS station, uh, in fact, carries uh, local news shows that talk about local politics uh, every week, called Final Edition is the name of the program. But when do they come around, you know, off the TV set and around the neighborhoods or in the areas of the city? Well, Marilyn, you've run some campaigns. Go ahead. <laughs> infrequently. In, infrequently. Have you run uh, some They're campaigns? available if, if people have questions. They all have, they all have uh, local offices. So if somebody needs some help or needs, uh, has an issue that they want to address, you can call the local office and then your material gets forwarded to him. You do get responses. You do get answers. Now, you've run campaigns before. What kind of campaigns? Local political campaigns for city and county commission officials. I've worked on a number of years in the past. I've retired from it now. How'd you, how'd you get involved in that? A friend. Both two different times. One, a, a friend was running for city council, and another, a, a friend was running for the county commission. And then that friend went on and ran for uh, uh, 
at large? At, at large. Yeah, at large and then in, uh, for Congress. Let me ask you a question. Did you, before you got into it, did you know what it was going to be like running campaigns and getting involved in politics, or were you surprised at what you learned? Eye opener. <laughs> Very much an eye opener. What was the, what was, what were, what were some of the biggest surprises, would you say, that you encountered? One was a pleasant surprise in that people, when they were asked to help, when they were asked to have a yard sign in their yard, uh, they were more than happy to. One of the concepts of both of the candidates that we, I've worked with was that they wanted to show local support, and so it, it wasn't just putting up yard signs helter skelter. It was someone's yard, and that was a statement saying that they represented and, and were in favor of that candidate. So uh, you had a lot of individual personal contact with, with people. Any 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 negative thing? Any disillusionment? Well, you have. You know, I'm sure you can have doors closed on it, but uh, most of the people. At that time, this was five or six years ago, and I think the political feelings have changed a little bit now than what they were five or six years ago. At least in Charlotte, we were then just getting involved in um, uh, at-large city and politics, and so there was a, a neighborhood, the neighborhood movement was just getting underway. Charlotte was expanding and growing, and a lot of the growing pains. and. Uh, it's just some, some, of the, some, some of the people we've spoken to say there's basically no such thing as a, as a good politician, there's no such thing as a clean politician. I was wondering, since you've been involved, whether you would agree with that or do you feel that that's, that's really not the case? I mean, you know, there's oh, yeah. a lot of anti-politician you know, yeah, feeling. There's, there's an country. awful lot of feeling right now. Anti-politicians, anti-politics, anti-government. Uh, people are feeling that they're not getting represented, that something happens when you somebody goes into the government, they, they change. Well, because of the people like you and the mass media, the politicians uh, always t tend to say what people want to hear, and not what they need to know. And so there's a lot of cynicism about uh, what actually happens after politicians make decisions, and things don't get fixed. They stay broken. What do you think? Or do they really want to know what they need to know or should know? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No, it's, 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 that's it's, what you guys are trying to do, is question. determine what people should know, what everybody should have the opportunity well, to Can you start by asking yourself that question again and answering it? <laughs> oh, do. I mean, the politicians uh, tend to say what people want to hear rather than what they need to know. And then do people really want to know what they need to know? What, I mean, you've been involved in politics, you know, at a level. I mean, what do you think makes a successful politician? At least in your neck of the woods, if not elsewhere. Hi. Telling people what they want to hear. There we go. <laughs> if you're a Republican, you tell people what, uh, you tell Republicans what they want to hear. If you're a Democrat, you uh, tell Democrats what they want to hear. It may not have anything to do with uh, fixing the problems that face a total city or a total county, uh, but you got to get elected, and the only way to get elected is through party support or people who think they're uh, Democrats or think they're Republicans, so you have to appeal to them. So we appeal to a majority of the minority in order to get elected. Does that make it possible for government to be successful then? No, not when the parties uh, tend to favor one segment of society versus another. Uh, Democrats tend to favor one half of society and Republicans the other half. And they're inconsistent positions, so the total interest of uh, the electorate is often disregarded. It's sort of the Tocqueville's tyranny of the majority. That's sort of, I mean, in some respects, that's somewhat sad, isn't it? I mean, if a politician has to say things just simply to cater to what they think people want to hear, we're not exactly creating. And the women that I worked for went in with the idea that they could make a difference and that they would be going in in an honest fashion, letting people know what they needed to hear. And uh, that was tough. What happened? Uh, neither of them are involved in politics right now, of their own choosing. Uh, sort of seems to, seems to indicate that, that idealism somehow is, is not what gets things done. 
You get burned when you're an idealist, I think, in politics. <laughs> uh, but we, in all those experiences, though, we met a, a fantastic number of people who were concerned, who were genuinely concerned, uh, who wanted to see things done differently. But unfortunately, the way it's always been done, it's hard to hard to get out. Do you know some? Do you know people who are professional politicians who just love all that? I mean, oh, you, absolutely. They're they enjoy eager. the celebrity. They enjoy the celebrity. The egos get in there, and they just become so terribly important <laughs> uh, to themselves. And I think give, they're give them a camera, and they're like an actor and an actress. They'll smile for the camera and say what the camera wants to see and hear. You're probably the only person we've talked to so far that brought up Tocqueville. If Tocqueville <laughs> was back looking at the United States right now, what would he think? I told you so. <laughs> he did uh, his book in 1831 and uh, predicted some of the problems that uh, democracy would have in this country. And uh, to a large extent, he was accurate. Uh, he was just, uh, what, Hundred and hundred and sixty years early, and we have a lot of the problems that, uh, particularly things like the budget problem, and so on. When the majority learned that they could uh, vote themselves benefits out of the public coffers and expect the uh, minority to pay for it, uh, then you get into some troubles. And I think we've seen that in recent decades. So what you seem to be saying is that the system is there's something wrong with the system. I mean, is that is There's that something what, flawed? Something Shall we say it has some glitches in it? <laughs> yeah. All right. That need to be addressed. And unfortunately, we look at it piecemeal rather than a total system, and so we have a decision system in this country that's uh, somewhat chaotic and a form of anarchy in the sense of uh, decision making. It may have always been that way, as far as we know. Pardon? It may have always been that way. You know, it may have been a series. Maybe we look at it, uh, you know, 200 years of. Uh, it's chaos. much harder to work a consensus today in our society than it was at the time of Williamsburg or uh, many smaller communities since then. It's a numbers problem. And it's it, to a large extent, it's a numbers problem. It is. It's very difficult to communicate when you've got 250 million people in the country and 250 million people can't make a decision. They said There's here no in the, way. In the community here, there were between 200 and 300 people living here and you get in a variety of economic situations and then a lot of people from outlying areas. But still, that lot didn't come anywhere close to the size of New York City or Charlotte, North Carolina or... Even small communities. Just one other question, then we'll let you go. Um, okay, maybe one of the two questions, too. We're, you know, we're looking for interesting politics in America. Based on your just your general knowledge, where would you send us? What part of the country, what cities, what states that you know of that has colorful, interesting politics? Besides Charlotte, North Carolina? Oh, okay. Uh, I think you probably find a lot of the same things happening in Charlotte that are the same things happening in, my mother was from Toledo, Ohio. We'd compare notes as to what was going on in Charlotte. She said, we've got the same thing going on in Toledo. Uh, probably wherever you go in comparable sized communities, you're going to find similar political if, problems, growing pains, whatever. If you travel around the country very much and read local newspapers, you're going to see the same issues uh, in most of the papers, whether it's East Coast, West Coast, or anything in between, uh, because cities have the same problem. And the cities basically are to a larger center out of control in terms of being manageable. But each one thinks it's unique. Right? Each thinks it's unique, and they are. They all have a lot of the similar problem. And uh, size has a lot to do with it. That was my question, so I'll answer the easy question at the end. I would like to be able to tell you when this is on the air, and the easiest way for us to do that is to have you say your names, your address, and we will write you or call you and let you know when it's on. So okay. you what are your names and what's your address? Marilyn and Bob Williams, Charlotte, North Carolina, 3221 Valentine, like February Valentine's Day, Valentine Lane, 
and it's uh, 28270. Thank you very much. You, you asked me a question to get okay. me going, see what we're saying. Okay. What is it about communities today that really hurts the political system? Well, I, one of my favorite books is uh, Democracy in America by de Tocqueville, and this was a young uh, French nobleman who came to this country in 1831 and wanted to find out why democracy works in this country. And one of the things he found out was that the strength of the democracy was that people lived in communities, that the full range of economic uh, differences and uh, other differences that people have uh, were all a part of the same community. Whereas what's happened to us since those days is we've become urbanized and we're divided up into little compartments now. So everyone lives in their own little area and doesn't have an outlook that has a total community-wide outlook. And the, the Tocqueville's uh, thesis was that democracy would begin to fail uh, uh, when the sense of community was lost that was found in the towns. And we see a lot of that, particularly in urban areas now. Do you think that people have any idea from one community to another what, what the, what's annoying? Yeah, it's all right. I'll let you go. <laughs> what politics were like, very general, is what you were saying. I come from Hanover County, which is very close by. It's just north of Richmond. And there the politics start at the vestry level. The Anglican Church is the local unit of government for a parish. And the whole colony is divided into parishes. And the ideal number of men on the vestry is 12. And obviously that number comes from the 12 apostles. But it's 12 members of a local vestry, just as there are 12 people on the governor's council. So local issues and ideas start and are used in a, um, they are dealt with on the parish level by the parish vestry. And then if it's something that has to go to a higher level of government, it goes to the local court. Um, very often some of the same folk that are on the parish vestry also sit on the local court. And some of those, depending on the parish, sit on the court level here in the colony. In colonial Virginia, who controls politics? In colonial Virginia, a very small number of families control the political scene. The, the 12 members of the Governor's Council are the most powerful men in the colony, usually also the most wealthy. Um, power and economy obviously go along. But then the, the families, the planters and the families with, of means, also provide their young men as representatives and as members of courts and through people come through the colony and help rule. But the, the most powerful men in the colony are the 12 members of the Governor's Council. We've been told that in the Virginia, Virginia colonies, ultimately all power flowed from the king who passed the word down to his various ministers. And someone has compared that to Virginia politics today. Uh, would you say that there's any sort of continuity between 250 years ago and today in Virginia politics? Well, no, out of character now? Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, well, certainly, the, in some ways, I mean, a lot of people would say that it has, hasn't changed so much that in, in Virginia, I mean, what people in Virginia refer to as the, the FFVs, the first families of Virginia, those few families that were controlling politics in the 18th century, if you follow the history through the 19th and early 20th, until very recently, the same families were still controlling Virginia um, for the last 200 years. And some people have made the argument throughout the nation that the high number of presidents and, and other national leaders, once again, can be traced right back to the same families that have been governing the country since it started. So, um, yeah, I think there's continuity in that sense. Why do you think that's true? Why? I think in this country we've created a, a ruling class in a sense, the same way it's been most of the Western world for most of civilization. But particularly this country is much after the English model and that there aren't so many differences. It's the biggest difference between a, a British class system as it's been until relatively recently in the American class system is that ours is based on more on economics, but it's still a created class system. It's not one by heredity the way it was in Britain, but the uh, system's still there. That's great. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome. All right. Welcome. Let's keep this in politics in the United States. So I'm going to ask you where you're from. Um, 
and then we're going to talk about just the, the areas within the four boundaries of the 50 states about politics, okay? So ready to roll? Where are you all, where are you all from? I'm from Houston, Texas. And I'm from uh, Columbia, South America. What about East Texas? Are there any politicians in East Texas? Um, I mean, I haven't lived in Texas in many years. Um, where do you live now? I live in D.C. Well, outside of D.C. I guess there are a few politicians there. Yes, <laughs> That's a few. few. <laughs> what are the politicians like in the local area that you live in? Um, you want to jump in on that one? No, do, you um, have, I mean, do you have anything that you live in the suburbs, right? I mean, um, in Virginia yeah. or Maryland or? Uh, um, well, I live in Maryland. Live in Maryland. Okay. Do you ever encounter, you know, local politicians? You ever read about them in the paper? See about them? See them on TV? How do they strike you as a, as a group? Um, Please be honest. <laughs> <laughs> they can edit it. <laughs> yeah, look, people have told us all where, sorts where of. People have told us all sorts of. I remember before now. I'm not to answer any of those. Sure questions. you are. <laughs> you, you live here too. Um, I think it's a lot of crap. A lot of it. Um, a lot of my feel say what we want to hear, um, and don't execute what they say they're going to execute. Some programs, I think that they've they've done a lot in education um, in Maryland, certainly in Montgomery County where I live. Um, it's a great education system. Um, Are you disillusioned? Would you say about politics? Do you think do you think it's possible to change things for for the better? I do think it's possible. Um, I don't think it would happen overnight, um, and I don't think that one person can make can make it happen. Um, and I think that it's a shame that they present themselves in that way, because that's not how change comes about, and certainly not in the situation that we're in now in this country. Um, there's a real lack of family um, and community. Those are issues that I think they could speak more strongly about. Um, so how do you decide who to support? I mean, you, I assume you vote. Yes. I mean, okay. Well, not everybody does. I mean, so how do you, you know, what, how do you decide one politician over another? You mean what kind of research do I do as, yeah, as an individual? Yeah, what, and what, um, what changes your mind? Some people, it's like a certain issue, how they stand on one issue or another. Some people have other... Um, for me, it's certainly it's issues, but outside of that, it's how I, how that person affects me, um, just automatically. Um, not necessarily appearance, but... Maybe the way they speak, um, I don't know, what, the, what they've done with their past history and politics has been. It's also kind of difficult who to believe nowadays. Yeah. Um, there's so many politicians out there it's, you know, coming up from everywhere. It's kind of like difficult to keep track of them, especially with their past. And even if they do have a past... And then they get elected and then we find out everything. <laughs> <laughs> and if they do have a past, uh, we don't know about it until it's already too late. So my view, especially uh, after, well, after living here for a, a little, for a while, is just uh, kind of like not to believe anybody until they actually show me something uh, that will really change my mind. And that, that's very difficult to come around nowadays. You came from another country. Uh, was there anything about American politics or political system that surprised you when you moved up here? Um, well, kind of like it, the um, big American dream, uh, and that I guess ha has to be able to do with politics because I guess politics is, is the ones that actually make it make it happen as far as being able to accomplish that American dream. But uh, nowadays it's getting more and more and more difficult to accomplish that. I'm not saying it's all the fault of the politicians, but um, a big part of it is. Would either of you ever think about getting involved in politics yourself, running for office, even on, you know, on a local level, school board or zoning board or anything like that? Well, if it's... It depends on what, what kind of opportunity it was and what, certainly what the board was. I mean, education, I, yes, possibly. I mean, do you think it takes a certain kind of personality to go, to go into politics, and do you have that I, kind of personality? I think it takes someone that's capable of lying, which no, from that aspect, I'm not. Um, but 
I think that's stereotype. Why does that? Why do you have to be like that to be a politician? Um. As long as you, you you are willing to to do something or or, or change no, something, at least at, deal with and, the bullshit. And, and not be in there, you know, for uh, some personal interest. Then yes, uh, unfortunately, I'm sure this happens here too. Is some people might have a good idea and have had the heart to get into uh, into politics to change things, but once they get in there, they get corrupt, uh, and then you get in the good, good old boy political circle. Do you think there's a lot of that? In oh America? yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Anything else, guys? I'm, I'm just curious. I mean, you know, both of you are, you know, are, are, are are espousing, you know, not a very positive view of politicians. But politicians have to get elected by people. So if people in general have these feelings, and many people in America do, why do they keep electing people like this? I mean, it's the best of two evils. What do you do? I mean, if the candidate's not there, you can't vote for them. So you pick the best one to your ability um, and hope that they'll be different. And I'm not so anti. I mean, I don't think that everyone is so terrible. No. I think that a lot of politicians have done some really wonderful things. Um, but I think in general, yeah, we could use a lot of change. I mean, uh, where, where I come from, uh, only maybe like 30% of, of the population vote. I don't know what the percentage rate here is, and I don't think it's that much, that, that much big, maybe 40, 45. Um, and that should tell you something about uh, people not believing in, in uh, in politicians or not believing on any other candidates that are on the ballot. Um, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's just kind of like difficult nowadays to be able to, to figure out who to believe in and who to vote for. I would rather not vote at all if I don't find the correct candidate. Um, that's not the answer either. That's not the answer either. Um, but if you're going to vote for somebody that you know is not going to do anything, um, then why vote? Great. Can we just ask you to uh, give us your name and address on the on the we'll record it and then we'll send you a card when it's going to be on television. Oh great! Can't guarantee you'll be in it, but uh, <laughs> you never know. Um, my name's Neva Kenny. My address is 2011 Glen Allen Avenue, Silver Spring, Maryland 20902. Um, Carlos Graham, 8230th Street, Apartment 10, Newport News, Virginia 23607. Great which is, how do politics in the United States differ from politics in Argentina? Who, who are you asking? <laughs> both, 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 you, both. Both together. Uh, but basically, you know, we, our constitution is, is based on the same principles. Uh, I think that the difference is the fact that probably our presidents uh, stick to the constitution, but sometimes, or more than often, ours, uh, don't uh, don't uh, comply with the concepts of the Constitution. Were you ever baffled by anything in, in North American politics when you, when you come up here and just don't understand why we do things one way or another? Absolutely not. Uh, <clears throat> maybe I don't understand it right away, but as far as uh, thinking and asking a few little questions, I realize what's going on. Is that all? That's great. Well, yeah. thanks very much. Thanks very much. Yeah. Have a good trip. Okay. Okay. For for the audience watching, where are you from? Williamsburg, Virginia. Do you have any politicians down here? Uh, yeah. We have some. What are the politicians like around here? Um. You know, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a good um, question. And what's the uh, other? They're friendly. Mm -hmm. And um. I think they try to do what what they sh can do for you. Yeah. What do you think uh, about well, that? Well, I'm. I well, said I agree. They do what they let them do. Okay, I really said I was from Williamsburg, but really it's James City County, which there are two different governments: city government and county government, uh, which is just right outside of Williamsburg. So you know, it's a county government that I that I'm governed by. So you, mean you think you, you think that you all get your money's worth? I mean, you pay taxes. You all get your money's worth in terms of the, the representation you get. 
the quality of the politicians represent you? Well, there are some changes that I think can be made um, in the area of, say, um, waste, trash. Uh, we recently had a change. You know, we could go to the landfill or, you know, to the dumpsters. Now you have to buy coupon books in order to <coughs> dispose of your waste. Uh, that can be a hassle sometimes. Uh, not that they're that expensive, but the inconvenient. And we don't really have uh, a trash system. They give us the service. So I couldn't help you on that issue. Well, we're, 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 and right yeah, now we're, we're getting ready to build uh, new schools, a new high school, uh, renovate uh, one of the elementary schools. And I wish we could get funds, more funds, so that we could go on and do, put our schools up to quality school. How do you two decide who to vote for? Uh, I guess which ones come closer to what you believe in right. and that you think that will do the, do the most for you. How can you, how can you tell? Well, you really can't tell. You, you can't tell, but uh, you just hope that that they will come through. At least try, even if they can't. They can't always come through what they promise, but at least attempt to do what they say they would, they would try to do. That's all I ask, you <laughs> try to do it, yeah. You think most politicians, would you say most politicians in, in this part of the state are honest, dishonest, uh, somewhere in between, how would you? You think they're good men and women, or uh, basically, I think that they are in this area. Yeah. yeah. So you wouldn't be embarrassed to say you're from James City. I would not be. No, no. I grew up here, and I went away for a few years, but we moved back here. So I'm pretty pleased with the area that I live in. So yeah, I'm not embarrassed at all to say I'm from James City. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Okay. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thank you, Bruce. Um, can you just give us your names and where you're from so we can tell you about the show? And it's, this is the easiest way for us to be able to tell people. So what are your names and where are you from? Okay, my name is Helen Bowman. I live in the Merrill Lake subdivision in James City County. I'm married. I have four children. I uh, teach at Head Start, Winsbury James City County Head Start. Well, I'm Ethel Morris. I live in Old Jamestown Apartments off Jamestown Road. Thank you, Thank you very much. Oh, okay. All right, thanks a, a lot. Thank you. Not on the Republicans getting set up. Okay. You ready to go? Yeah, yeah. Ready to go. Ready to go? Yep. Get over here, Paul. Okay. Where are you all from? Uh, well, we live here in Williamsburg. Orchard is a German citizen, and I was born in Mississippi. Oh, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but I've been all over. I've traveled the world. And Let's start. We we'll start with with the Deep South. Are there any politicians in Mississippi? Uh, since John Stennis retired from the Congress, I don't know. I've been down there in a long time. You know, James O. Eastland and John Stennis were the only two. I... What were politics like down where you grew up? I didn't grow up there. My dad worked for the government, so I grew up in. New York and Virginia, actually. Hmm. Well, how long have you both been here? I've been here since 77. Yeah, and I've, I've been in the area since 80. Well, you've been here for a long while. Are there politicians in this area? Yeah, sure. We have Charles Robb. Chuck right. Robb and John <laughs> Warner, and uh, we have politicians that... Uh, oh, that, uh, Yeah, that uh, raise their salary while uh, the cut, while it seems like uh, the country is going down the tubes, you know, but, uh, you know. Is that unusual for politicians? No, no. And uh, now a new genre has moved into uh, the executive order that, uh, that uh, preached a domestic program while they were practicing something else and has no idea about foreign policy. So I'm not real happy with that either. I spent 10 years in the military. How do we get the kinds of political leaders that we get? Uh, I think the world situation is so chaotic. If you look at history, there were lots of faults in the personalities of Thomas Jefferson and George Washington. George Washington was a uh, had his temper and was a bar brawler at times, and uh, Thomas Jefferson, you know. Uh, believed in freedom and liberty, but kept slaves. 
And so I think human frailty has is built into the system that we have now to the point where uh, if someone was going to solve the problems that are built in, that are in our system now, it's going to have to be Jesus Christ coming back again. Because I don't think we can elect a leader good enough to solve the problem, especially the national debt. You know? The Republicans claim it was the Democratic Congress. The Democrats claim it was the overspending Republicans. All we know is that we have a $4.3 trillion debt that the interest payment of the interest on money that's been spent has, is more than uh, is going to equal more than uh, on social programs and education in the next few years. Well, that's a big problem. How do you decide who to vote for then? The most, yeah, the, the most, the honest man, the man with character. You know, if you can look at any man and say, hey, this man is true to his family, true to his wife. Uh, is a hard worker and uh, and for me served in the military and has an honorable discharge you, know, you vote for an honest man you know and uh, and if he espouses a liberal or a conservative uh, you know agenda that changes with the wind you know the honest man at least you'll know where he's at when you vote for him you know? Up in yeah, Germany. Sometimes too. Yes. You grew up in Germany. Is there any? What's the thing that you find the strangest about the way we, we practice politics in the United States? It's too much money involved. Everything's big business. That's why we don't have a decent health program. They just it, the same goes for the school system. I think there's just too much social life in there. Uh, we, for instance, we don't have any. Um, competitive sports in school over there at all. Well, this is such a big deal over here uh, that, you know, the academics get lost sometimes. What about, like, our, the way we just have elections and things like that? Is there anything you find strange when you're watching television election time going, gee, we didn't have this back in, the, back in Germany? Well, of course, now everything is television. It wasn't for television. It's very hard to to vote to elect somebody, that's the only way you actually get to know somebody. And you know, in Germany it's a little different. You do not vote actually for the president. He gets, you know, voted for. But uh, nah, it, it's not really that strange. I mean I uh, I remember one thing about German politics when Billy Brandt was he was Willy Brandt was uh, was known as one of the wonderful leaders of NATO and the Western world, and a little bitty scandal came up in his administration about a high-placed cabinet officer who might have been spying or had a secretary spying or something. He immediately resigned up that rather than put the country through any kind of newspaper stuff, you know? And, uh, and the people that we have running our show don't have that much love for the country that they would rather take themselves out of the picture than have the country looked upon by foreign leaders, you know, as a second-rate nation. I mean, I the real character is, you know, you're, you're a philosopher king when people respect you as a philosopher king, and then if...